Hey and welcome back to another video and we're going to be carrying on with our Swift UI data flow mini series. In this video though we're going to be talking about state object. So what is state object? So what is state object? So essentially state object is a property wrapper that basically allows us to basically mark our objects which conform to observable objects and basically maintain a reference to this object within our views. So what's an example of this? So let's say, for example, if you have like a class or a view model, which is a good example, and you basically have a bunch of properties within your view model that you want to use to manage the state of a view, state object is probably what you want to use within your Swift UI view. So within your view model, you probably want to mark your properties where you want the state of your view to change as published. So that's why you have the app published uh, property wrapper, which basically allows you to trigger redraws for your Swift UI views, and you can also read and write to these properties. Now, why do we do this? Essentially, views in Swift UI are structs. So, what does that mean? Well, if you're not, if you don't really know the difference between a struct and a class, just very quickly, a class is a reference type, meaning that once you create it, it's basically there in memory. You can reference it later. But structs are a bit different, they're value types. So essentially, whenever you create a struct and you basically make a change to that struct, it basically creates a copy. So a new version of itself. Now, obviously, if we didn't have this at state object property wrapper, when if you had a view model that you create an instance for and you were to change a property in the view model, whenever your struct basically gets re-invalidated and redrawn, change that you made is now gone. So what state object allows us to do is it basically allows us to almost like use like almost like a reference type within a Swift UI view. So what we're going to do now is we're basically going to see how we can actually use state object. So what we're essentially going to do is we're basically going to build a counter where you can basically tap a button to increase and tap a button to obviously decrease. And we'll basically see how the state object that we're going to create, which in our case could be our view model, actually handles basically maintaining its value and also redrawing the view to show the updates that we make. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to basically create our counter view model. So let's do that now. So in order to actually use um, the state object property wrapper, you basically need to make sure that your class that you write basically conforms to observable objects. So let's do that now. So essentially what we're basically saying here is that by marking our class with observable objects, we're essentially saying that it's possible for the properties in this class to change. So when we actually move on to the app publish properties, that's what we're actually talking about, that we're basically saying that this class, we want to basically keep it in memory so that we can react to the changes that we make to it. So the next thing we need to do now is actually add a property to actually manage our counter. So let's do that now. And what we've basically done here is basically created our property counter and marked it as at publish. So what we're basically saying here is that it's possible to basically read and write to this property here counter. And whenever this counter changes, we want to basically cause some kind of like redraw. So essentially, this is going to basically be our property that could potentially change in our Swift UI view. And you'll also notice that I've actually marked it as private set. So the reason why I've marked this as private set is because I want to basically allow you to basically access the property from outside the class. I don't want you to be able to change it from outside of the scope of this class. So we can only change the contents of counter within this class. So it just helps us protect this property. And we also mark this by default to start from zero. So what we need to do now is we actually need to write two functions. So we need to write one function to increase this counter and another function to decrease the counter. So let's do that now. Cool. So we've got our increase function, which is basically just incrementing and adding one to our counter every single time. And we've also got our decrease here where we make sure that the counter is greater than zero before we actually subtract a value because we don't want to go into the negatives. So now that we've actually got our view model defined, what we actually need to do now is basically set up um, our content view to actually use this using state objects. So let's do that now. So let's go into our content view 
And within here, all we need to do at the top is basically type this out. As you can see, we've used the at state object property wrapper here, and we basically created an instance of our view model. So when you're basically creating a state object, you want to make sure that you initialize your object where you basically use the actual property wrapper. And one interesting thing I want to show you is that if I go into my view model and I actually remove the conformance to observable object, you'll actually see when I actually build the project that I have an error. So if we go back to this error and check what it says, it basically says here that the generic state object requires that count of view model conforms to observable object. So essentially, if you don't add the, this type to your view model, your class, or whatever it is that you're, you want to call it, you can't use the at state object uh, property wrapper because it's not able to basically track whatever changes you make to your class. So let's go back here and add that back in so we can get rid of the error. All right, cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to add in some UI so we can essentially change the text on the screen and see how we can actually maintain the counter, but still redraw this view so it reflects the changes. So I'm gonna do some typing and I'll break it, out, break it down. So let's just basically look at what we've got here. So we've got a text object where we basically access the counter property within our counter view model. And we also have a H stack here where we have two buttons. So we have one button that says increase. And within the action for the button, we're basically going to say we want to increase the counter. And we have another button that essentially does the exact same thing, except this time we call the decrease function. So now let's see how state object works, which actually basically allows us to maintain the value of our counter so it doesn't get destroyed when our view is redrawn. But also allows us to reflect those changes. So if we go to the preview and we hit increase, you'll see that the count is going up by one. And if we go to decrease, you'll see that the count is going down by you know, one as well. And if we go down to zero, we can't go below zero. So obviously our view model is basically maintaining the correct value because it's you know working properly. And also as well, our view is also you know being redrawn with the correct value for our counter. So you can see here how state object allows us to basically maintain our objects. So what we're gonna do now is go back to our presentation and actually discuss some use cases and also where you'd want to use state objects. So let's do that now. Well, essentially, if you have a object with published properties, that you need to basically maintain and you also want your view to basically update based on these changes and you probably wanna use a state object and you want to use a class that holds all your properties so i know i've done videos before where i basically showed like a property like is loading or is on which was just like one state variable but if you have an object with multiple properties or you know it's, it's quite a complex object where you need to track the changes you probably want to use a state object also, you probably also want to use state objects rather than observe object to make sure that you only have one instance of that object. So I know prior to, I think it's iOS 14, um, you would just basically create and use observe object, which does have its use cases, but it's possible if you use an observed object to instantiate your observable object that it basically gets to, you know, destroyed or you basically lose a reference to it. So to make sure that the state of your object is never lost, you wanna use a state object also as well. And just going back to my original point, if you have loads of properties, then it's just cleaner to basically have a state object that holds a published um, property for a class or whatever type that you need to basically track changes for. And um, this also as well could include structs as well. So you're not just limited to using publish with classes. So yeah, so that's everything um, from me in today's video. If you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section below. Um, I'd also really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and also as well, uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.